I've always produced user-friendly irons, and in 2019, the G410s hit the shelves. Hugely popular and a big seller. This year, the darker, moodier G710 arrived, and I'm going to test them both with data, on course play, and I'll give you my overall comparison. Right, so back down on the course at Conway Golf Club and uh, today we're going to be looking at, like I said, the G710 and the G410. Really interesting two golf clubs because I think they've got mass appeal in terms of the, uh, the majority of golfers that are out there. I think lots of us could be playing these things. But what is it that splits them and why should you choose one or the other? There's a bit of a price difference and is it going to be worth a price difference? We're going to find out, we're going to test them in reality out here on the course. I'll tell you what I think in terms of how they look how they feel and overall how do they perform out here on the course and which would I choose as a winner out the pair of them in a head to head. Right, in terms of looks, they're very, very different and uh, very much what appeals to the individual, I suppose. I would say in the G410, it's very much what we come to expect from Ping. It's very much tr the traditional cavity back. I'd say almost at the moment, bordering on old fashioned, if you like, the way that modern clubs have developed in recent uh, years. And I think the G710 is the exact opposite of what I've just said. It's that one piece, single piece design. Uh, the, the black finish again, I think is particularly nice. They've both got this Hydra Pearl 2 finish on them, but obviously one being this sort of chrome and one being this, uh, this darker grey uh, material. I know for me personally, I prefer the looks of the G710. But then at address, the other thing to have a look at is top line. And again, in the length of sort of heel to toe, and there's very little to separate them at all. In terms of offset, once again, I would say very little to split them. And for me, again, it's all about colouring as much as anything because that's all you see at the top is one is black and one is chrome but like I said very very similar in terms of how they both look so it's all about performance at this stage I think one other thing to mention as well though that I did pick up on is the shaft options they brought in in terms of the G710 the Distanza lightweight I think it's a 43 gram shaft and I know personally I took my dad for a custom fit at ping and that was very helpful in terms of slower swing speeds the cb alter shaft that you get in the g410 is a 63 gram shaft and no doubt you could uh, put the distanza in but i know as a standard option that was the thing that was about the g710 that they introduced this year and uh, a really interesting addition i think in terms of those slower swing speeds go on i could go in Oh, it has gone in. Right, if you're new to the channel, I am The Average Golfer and I record uh, plenty of content based on uh, club reviews. I also do a lot of travel content, but only if you continue to watch. So uh, please consider hitting that subscribe button. You never know if you've enjoyed what you've seen and maybe hit that like button as well. Interestingly enough, again, that wasn't the best of... It wasn't the best of shots, a little bit heavy, a little bit of turf before ball, but again, what I always like about game improvement irons, uh, they say in terms of sweet spots, they don't matter. Well, I think they do, because like I said, that's a typical example of the ball did far better than it should have done. For me out here on the course, I tend to reach more or more confidently for the G710. There's no real reason for that, I don't suppose, other than each time I pick it up, I tend to hit a better ball than I do with the G410. But in terms of sound, I think that's where maybe there's another sway to me towards this G710. 
I think it's um, quite harsh with the G410. I was critical of it when it came out. And I think again, when I reviewed the G710, the acoustics are far better. And for me, that's something that is definitely noticeable out here on the course when you've got them both together. So from a sound and feel perspective, without doubt for me, the G710 is a far better feeling golf club. Do you want to play this shot as well? That uh, played a couple of shots from this position last week, and again, they did pretty well. It's fair to say, and uh, just a point to mention that both of them have ample enough feel in terms of playing that sort of chip and run shot, the variety of shots. And there's another thing that people mention that you can't shape shots with uh, these type of irons, which again, I think is a bit of a myth to be honest with you. I mean, we struggle not to shape shots, don't we? So uh, there's, they're playable in all kinds of uh, situations, and plenty enough feel in both of them to understand some feel back into the hands and understand what it is you're trying to do with a golf club. Right next up is dry ball data and I think pretty much if I throw these numbers in front of you now, uh, five yards to split them in terms of their average carry distance, 165 the G710 as opposed to 160 with the G410 and again half a degree of difference I would think that that's probably to do with that. 112 ball speed, 113 ball speed, again, very, very similar and uh, what you'd expect. Difference in launch, 17.4 as opposed to 20 degrees. That was quite different. And the other thing quite different is 4-4 spin as opposed to 5-2 spin. And I think, again, my argument has always been the same. You see a lot of shots that I play and you see a landing on the green and these are played with these irons with those spin numbers. And we're in the middle of uh, what is a very dry spell in the UK. So I've argued this for many many years that those spin numbers I think there's way too much attention paid to them and you can see that that ball is clearly stopping landing on greens and not having either an issue with either club with either spin number so I don't know whether dry ball data or spin number in terms of dry ball data starts to get different when there's a bit of turf interaction I don't know but I'm not seeing those kind of problems that that spin number would suggest but also one thing to mention as well is that a lot of people will have issue and take issue with the G710 and the G410 being strongly lofted. And these are seven irons and I'll class them as perhaps a six iron or maybe even a five iron for traditional lofts. And if you're given those spin numbers with your five iron or your six iron, I think that you'd be more than happy. And I think people forget that sometimes. Right, so we're going to do something a bit different this time in terms of head-to-head -head videos going forward. You can see I'm going to put some scores up in front here. Uh, which is how I rate these in terms of out of 10 in terms of different performance characteristics. And you'll see from the scores that there is an overall winner and it was clear throughout the review, I think, that I think that the G710 is without doubt the better product. For me, it definitely looks better, it sounds and feels better. And overall, just the performance characteristics were perhaps bit better for me, so that lower ball flight I slightly preferred. Although for a lot of people, that necessarily won't be a, a, something that they choose to uh, play. The other big difference is the price, 899 as opposed to 649, so there's a big consideration there. 250 pound in UK at the moment, price difference, so uh, yet yeah, there's a big deal there. I think you can see why you're paying the extra money. This is the newer model, so you'd expect it to be more expensive. But I think the overall summary is this, Ping produce really good game improvement type irons. And this again, or these again, are no different. I think either one you'd choose for the reasons that suit you. I don't think you can go too far wrong, to be honest with you. Two really good clubs did well, dry ball data, and did incredibly well out here on the course, which is uh, where it really matters. So you enjoyed that one. Like I said earlier, thanks for watching. Maybe hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. And uh, comments down below are always welcomed. And I'll see you soon.